Today I'm going to go over how to set up a new Plex Media Server in Windows 10. I'll be starting with the basics, like what even is Plex Media Server in the first place. We will talk about things you should consider when deciding what to use as a Plex server, the initial installation and setup, as well as some performance tweaks to get the most out of your server. There are shortcuts to different topics in this video located in the description below. If you'd like to skip ahead to the section pertinent to you, you're welcome to do so. For those new to this channel that don't already know what Plex is, Plex allows you to stream all of your media from anywhere on any device. The way it works is described very well on Plex's own website, but basically, you run a server at home that can be installed on Windows, Linux, OS X, or most any other major operating systems. The operating systems that are supported are listed here. Plex supports most media file types. It also allows you to share your media with friends or family with comprehensive client support for most major smart TVs as well as most media players, like the Apple TV, the Roku, a Fire Stick, the Sonos, TiVo, many clients are supported. Setup is easy and once you're done you simply point the server to your media files and it auto magically scans the files, sorts them, and downloads covers and artwork that ultimately give a very Netflix-like experience to you or anyone you're sharing with. Gone are the days of having a PC at every TV and launching files over an SMB or NFS mount just to watch your media at home with no ability to stream things at the gym or when you're outside of your house. There are two main versions of Plex Media Server, a free version and a paid version. The paid version is about $5 a month. There is a lifetime pass you can buy and sometimes you'll get emails with discounts, but on their website, they do break down the differences between the two, the free version versus the paid version. The paid version, which is also known as the Plex Pass, allows you to activate all the mobile apps. It enables live TV and DVR. You can enable offline syncing for when you're outside of your home or on an airplane above the ocean. One of the major differences though is actually hardware transcoding, which I'll get into a little bit later, but it's a major performance tweak that you can enable if you have the paid version. If this is your first Plex Media Server, I think it makes sense to go over server options. I have a great video about sizing a Plex Media Server and how to get the most bang for your buck linked in the description below. But the first questions to ask yourself before heading to that video are, how many devices do you have in your house? What is your internet bandwidth? And whether you will be sharing with friends or family? And if so, how many people you might want to share with? I can show you my stats as an example of how many transcodes versus direct plays you might want to expect, but before we go there, we should note that sharing outside of your home can require a significant amount of upload bandwidth. The amount of bandwidth used varies by your media source bitrate, but you can typically expect needing anywhere from 2 to 10 megabits per second per stream. Sure, you can have the people you share with transcode your media down to lower bit rates at a cost to video quality but this will also come with an added cost of needing to transcode those files down to lower bit rates on your server prior to streaming them, which will mean more work for your server. Transcoding can be a complicated topic, but it's a useful one to briefly touch on and understand when choosing a server. If you will be direct playing everything in your home and don't need to share with anyone, you can skip this as the server requirements for that are very minimal. But let's assume out of 10 active streams, you might have between 3 to 4 people needing to transcode to either a different container, media type, or bitrate, which will mean you will want to have a server capable of handling that should the need arise. Sure, you can run Plex Media Server on anything from a Raspberry Pi, Nvidia Shield, or NAS. Those devices are very low power and often won't be able to transcode more than a couple of streams simultaneously, which might or might not be enough for you. This can be helped by having something that supports hardware transcoding, like some of the newer NAS options out there today, or adding a GPU to your server like a P2000. But the bottom line is you should determine how many transcodes you might need and what your internet connection can support. A safe assumption that should provide a little headroom is half of your active streams could end up getting transcoded. You can help your friends and yourself by encouraging them to enable direct play, but you will inevitably end up finding yourself needing to provide transcode support. You can also assume most of your friends won't be watching something 24-7, so you don't need to scale or build your server to handle all the friends you're sharing with. 
Armed with that information, you can head on over to our YouTube channel and find our right sizing a Plex server video to determine what hardware you might want to use. If you already have an old machine you want to use, we will now move on to the installation of Plex Media Server in Windows. The first step is to create a Plex account. You'll use this later. Assuming you've already created a Plex account, you're going to go down to get Plex on your device from the main Plex.tv homepage. And from here, you're going to want to select Plex Media Server. You can have a client or the server. And we're going to be installing the server, and the client is used to connect to the server and stream media. Once you select the server, go ahead and pick which operating system is applicable to you. We're going to be doing this in Windows, so I'm going to download the Windows Plex Media Server installer. Once that's done installing, go ahead and launch the file. And go ahead and select where you want to install the server by clicking Options and selecting the actual path, file path. Click OK and click Install. Once Plex is installed, go ahead and click Launch. Once you're done installing, if you don't automatically get a pop-up window to walk you through the wizard, the setup installation wizard, go ahead and double click your Plex Media Server icon in your system tray if you're running Windows. This will take you to the initial Plex Media Server setup wizard. What we're going to do here is click got it first. We're going to add our media libraries and point to whatever directories those live in as well as name our server. If you check this box, it tries to use UPnP to automatically add the port forwarding rule. This may or may not work, and we'll walk through port forwarding here in a moment. But go ahead and name your server, click Next, and then we're going to add our libraries. I don't have the music or a photos library, so I'm going to go ahead and remove both of those. Click Add Library. I'm going to click Movies. Next, I'm going to browse for my Movies folder. I've gone ahead and downloaded a bunch of public domain free movies. I'm going to click Add once I select the folder. I'm going to Add Library. And next, you would do the same thing for TV shows. If you wanted to add TV shows, you would create a TV show library, browse for your media folder, select the TV shows, and click la Add Library. But we're going to click Next. We're just going to have movies for this demonstration. And then Done. And what that does is automatically scans through your library folder that you pointed to, finds the files in that folder, and downloads cover art as well as the appropriate trailers if you have trailers enabled. Now I've waited for the library to refresh all the metadata, and as you can see we have six movies in this library. And if we go into the folder that it was scanning, there are a total of six files. One thing you'll notice is this movie here, The Night of the Living Dead, it actually matched with a version or a year that isn't accurate. This is the original version of the movie. I'll take this as an opportunity to show you how to fix this. This does happen occasionally, but all you have to do is click the ellipses button, click Fix Match. It'll use its auto search, auto match by default. Usually that's good enough, but you can go to search options and change the title and add a year if you'd like. And then I'm going to pick the 1968 version because that's the version that I have here. And once that's done, it's going to go and grab new metadata or a new poster art or cover for the movie. As you can see, it matched correctly now and it has the correct date. And this is what gives you that Netflix like feel to Plex. Something that I think is worth noting here, you don't have to have all of the movies on the local computer. If you have an SMB or NFS mount, for instance, you can go ahead and add those movies or TV shows to Plex by simply clicking Edit on your library, browsing for media folder, and adding the path to that directory. In my case, I mapped it to the Z drive and their 4K movies. If you click Add and Save Changes, it's going to add all of the movies that you've selected.
Next, we will cover making your server available outside of your home. To do this, you will have to make sure port forwarding is working. By default, assuming UPnP is not enabled on your router and or it's not working, your Plex Media server will not be accessible outside of your network. The reason for this is somewhat complicated, but the shorter of it is, most home routers slash firewalls block inbound connections. This is to protect your hosts from being scanned and exploited by malicious actors on the internet. This is great for security, but stops things like Plex from reaching into your home network to allow you or your friends to connect and stream content. To enable this, all you need to do is go to your router's web interface, usually accessible by pointing to your gateway address, which is often 192.168.1.1 or something similar. To find out what your gateway address is in Windows, you can go ahead and hold the Windows key and hit R, type in CMD, and IP config. Hit enter, and you'll see, in my case, my gateway is 192.168.0.1. And if you go to that page, you'll see this is my router's default login page. Now this is just going to be an example of how to port forward. Your router user interface is going to be a little bit different. You might have to pull a manual down from the manufacturer's website of whatever router you're using. But in my case, after logging in, I go to Advanced Setup. And you're going to try to look for something that says Port Forwarding. And from here, you're going to go ahead and forward port 32400 to whatever host your Plex server is running on. In my case, I'm running it on 192.168.0.68. Now, I have a Plex Media server on this network that I don't want to break, so I'm not going to go ahead and add it. But if I were to add it, I would select that host, the starting port, the starting port, and the ending port. And then TCP is the protocol, and you want to forward all IP addresses. You would click apply, and then from that point, you would go back into your Plex web UI, go to settings, click on remote access, and then verify that remote access is working. You could sometimes hit retry, but that'll show you whether or not remote access is working. So now your server has libraries, it's accessible externally, but now you want to allow your friends to use your server from their own Plex accounts. Sharing a server is very easy. All you have to do is go to your settings, click sharing, and then click the invite friend button. From there, you're going to go ahead and select the username, click next, select what libraries you want them to have access to, and click invite. After you do that, they're going to have a similar window with a little green checkbox, and they'll have to go in and click accept on your invite. And that's it. Your server's all set up. You have your libraries and you're sharing with friends. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions or you want to get a conversation going about what your server that you're running is and how many terabytes it has or what the hardware specs are, go ahead and comment below. I'm going to be making a video about my specific server here in the coming days. Please like and subscribe and thank you for watching this video.